I am hearing talk that there is some sort of a big party going on at Usagi Tsukino's place. We shall investigate this. Hey guys, DB Rai here, and I am back continuing with What If Sailor Moon Was in Dragon Ball Z, and I do apologize for the three to four day wait on this one. Had to watch my nephew for the last couple of days, and the other couple of days before that, I just didn't have an opportunity to record. But here we are now, continuing on. And um, continuing right where we left off with the previous part, with um, Vegeta knowing the identity of the Sailor Starlights being the Free Light Teen, teen Idol group, Seiya, uh, Taiki, and is it Har is it? I think, it be, I think it begins with a H. Hati or something. Hataya. Something like that, I think. I, <laughs> anyway. Who have since become such a big friends of Sa Sailor Moon in the game, of course. No one, they don't realise who each other is at the moment, but we're getting to that. We're getting to that. Every part gives us one step closer to that shocker. And I do intend to do it different than what it does in the Sailor Moon original anime. Plus, even throw in a few other different things. Now, much like in the original, they've had their little camp out adventure. And Seiya's little pra practical joke, dressing up as a monster to try scare the girls. With them actually having, with the Sailor Guardians actually having to fight and stop a real monster instead. I guess the joke was on Seiya that time around. And well, as for Goku and the gang, the, tra the training to confront the androids has not been put on hold or stopped for um, any reason whatsoever. Except now, Usagi is now having to watch her house by herself, along with this uh, mysterious girl, Chibi Chibi, who has magically come into her life, and much like Chibi Usa, has hypnotized Usagi's family into thinking she's a relative. In this case, Usagi's younger sister. And, um, well, with them now sort of watching over her and going along with the cover story and also trying to work out Chibi Chibi's identity well they basically um, yeah, are yeah being forced <laughs> they decide to keep Usagi company after hearing about the string of burglaries going, all, well, going around in, their, in her neighborhood so She's um, freaked out about that, and Seiya has nobly volunteered to be her bodyguard. <laughs> Typical Seiya. Always hitting on Usagi whenever she can. And, um, well, what started out as the two of them alone at her house, Seiya decided to try and take the opportunity to reveal to... Usagi that she is indeed Sailor Starfighter from the Sailor Starlights and tell her the truth about their entire mission and why they are down there in the first place but they do understand some of it they know someone called Galax they know about Galaxia thanks to Trunks's warning and they were told to trust to trust the stars tr tr trust the free stars as Trunks put it a bit of a hint, could the Starlights be the stars that they're talking about? Well, yeah, of course they are. But no one's figured that out yet, which means you still get Uranus and Seiya at each other's throats every now and then. And so, with um, what's that as Seiya's Usagi eventually becomes Chibi Chibi, um, um, Ray Army. Minako and Marco, and the Free Starlights, and eventually, well, Michiru and Uranus's car also breaks down, which happens to be 
on a suit Usagi Street and they pop in as well. And you pretty much got the free lights doing their best to ignore Hiroka and Michiru, who, let's face it, aren't very nice to them, not very nice to them at all. I guess Haruka can just sort of s gets that same sort of feeling of dread when when Hiroka's around Sailor Starfighter. Or any of the Sailor Starlights for that matter. Anyway, so then Mr. Pizza Man and um and his television crew come into the house and everything goes crazy and much like in the Sailor Moon anime Sa Sailor Illumina Siren and Sailor Crow, I think her name is, crashes the party and um, attempts to steal the um, TV show host's star seed. And, um, well, if you didn't think, if you thought the mayhem stopped there with them um, all transformed in their... Um, Sailor costumes, all of them cringed into that kitchen. You've seen nothing yet, because Goku, Chi Chi, along with Bomber and Vegeta show up too. Who, um, basically Chi Chi and Bomber insisted that a bunch of, um, high school students shouldn't be alone having a party unsupervised. Aw, oh, but I don't want to be here, Chi Chi. I'd rather be here training. But then he sees the food and he basically just wanders runs in and starts stuffing his face. Everyone looking back and forth, all confused on what's actually going on at this point of the story. And it's um, pretty much to the point where, um, um, Kakarot, can't you see there are intruders in this house? What? I'm hungry, Vegeta, I can't help it. Ah, oh, you are such a moron. Do I have to explain everything to you? And, um, well, Vegeta goes to power up a Gallic gun and pretty much everyone is, um, dogpiling Prince Vegeta, holding him back. You can't use that kind of attack here. You're gonna blow up the entire house. And, um, well, the monster tries to, um, well, as we know, once, um, I guess I skipped a little bit here, once they succeed in trying to take a star seed, what's left of the person becomes a monster. Sailor Moon has to turn them back, so, um, sorry I sort of skipped that part, but yeah, the monster, aka the TV show host, is trying to slip, slip past them and get away. What? Damn it, Kakarot, will you pay attention, put down that drumstick? This one's getting away! And well... Goku, without thinking, buys a Kamehameha! And there goes Usagi Tsukino's house, pizzas everywhere, um, the Sailor Guardians are sort of all sitting on top of the rubble, um, covered in ash marks, you know, like they do in cartoons. <laughs> but, the TV show host didn't get away, and Sailor Moon's able to turn him back, like she does in the anime, and, um, well... They are angry looking at Goku and d demanding that he, um, fixes the house. And, um, well, luckily Bulma the genius was sort of prepared for this and began preparing capsules to replicate houses from the Tokyo region. You know, because of damages and things like this. And they have an exact replication of, um, Usagi's house, luckily, so all's well that ends well there. And, um, well, once again, all the Sailor Guardians are able to split up without them knowing who the Sailor Starlights are, and the Sailor Starlights not knowing who the, I guess you could call the Solar System Sailor Guardians are. And, um, all's well that ends well. And so, our heroes are not seen again with the Dragon Team until the three years have now come and gone. It has now been three years, which I guess this actually makes the Sailor Guardians older than what we've ever seen them in the story. And 
Sail st and um, the Sail of Starlight. And well, needless to say, everyone is meeting up exactly where these so-called androids are supposed to strike, including the Sailor Guardians. And, um, well, even Goku is showing up, and yes, just like in the original part in the, in the Dragon Ball Z timeline, Goku is huffing and puffing more than usual, the hard virus is beginning to take its creepy-like effect on Goku. After Yajirobe gives them some sensu beans, his car is blown out of the sky, and, um, well, they've had to figure out that they can't sense the android's energy, but that's okay, Mercury is on the job with her visor. Nothing escapes Mercury's visor, and she is indeed able to detect the two, so the good thing about this is, is that none of our teammates are going to get separated at this point, of, point in time. Now, are the Starlights here for this um, big three-year battle? Well, yes, but they haven't arrived yet. There is something else, or, some, or a certain someone else, that's kind of delaying their arrival at the moment. And I think that's where we'll leave things for the time being. So what do you guys think? Did you enjoy this part of the story? Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments in the, um, leave your comments below and I will see you guys again for the next part. Because now, the android saga begins. And, and why is Galaxia biding so much of her time? All these answers and more next time.